Hi, John Tracy Egan here. So since we're all social distancing and we're looking for projects and things to occupy our time, I came up with a little idea. I was digging through my bookshelf and I happened to find this script. Here's Lucy from a 1970 sitcom. It's from January 15th, 1970, and it's called Lucy the Crusader. It was written by Milt Josephsberg and Alan Schwartz. It was given to me as a gift by my friend Michael West because he knows I'm a big fan of Lucy. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun if we sort of made a remake of it? But since we can't put actors in the same room, instead of having it being called a sitcom, we're gonna call it a sit home. So I have challenged some of my friends. I've given them parts. They don't know who is playing the other part. They are to read their lines on their iPhone and send it to me and I'm to edit it together. Now by no means am I a great editor or a great filmmaker, but I thought it might be fun. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy. Here's Lucy, Lucy the Crusader. Lucy the Crusader, scene one. Fade in, interior, Lucy's living room. Near the kitchen, a bridge table is set up with three chairs around it. There is a tablecloth on the table, and it is set for a meal, which has evidently already taken place. Near the stairs, there's a large gift-wrapped package. Craig is sitting alone at the table, wearing a napkin as a blindfold. Could I take the blindfold off now? Just a second. Just a second. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Craig. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> hey, that's groovy. See if you can blow all the candles out. <sighs> wait, wait. If you blow out all the candles with one breath, a wish will come true, so make a wish. Come on, Craig. There'll be wax all over the cake. <laughs> Lucy slaps Craig on the back, causing him to exhale forcefully and blowing out the candles. <sighs> <sighs> oh, that's great. Did you make a wish? Yep. What'd you wish for? That someone would slap me on the back before I blacked out. That's not much of a wish. Well, at least it came true. Go ahead, son. Cut the cake. It looks delicious. Uh, I'm going to take a real big slice. I hope you liked it. I baked it. Ah, I just remembered. I'm on a diet. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mom. I remember the last birthday cake that Kim made for me. Oh, for heaven's sake, Craig. I was only nine years old. How was I supposed to know you weren't supposed to fry it? <laughs> Well, because girls are supposed to know. But I was just a kid and... Come on, Craig. Open your present now. What is it? It's something you've always wanted. Mom, how did you gift wrap Raquel Welch? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a hi-fi set. Oh, I hope you like it. Oh, gee, thanks, Mom. It's, it's wonderful, but isn't it kind of expensive? Yes, but it's something the whole family can enjoy, right? And it's a nice piece of furniture, too. Gee, I can't wait to hear it. Well, it's a simple setup. See, all I have to do is plug it in down here, and you get a record. How about this one? Stomp your feet till your eyes pop out. It's by that new group, Peter, Paul, and Spiro. <laughs> Okay, well, it's all set up. Kim crosses to Craig and gives him the record. Craig puts it on the player and turns it on. We hear a speeded up singing sound, sort of like squirrel talk speed. Kim and Craig look startled, but Lucy looks pleased. Craig turns off the record. Well, but wait, no. hey, they, they were good. The record was playing too fast. I'll have to adjust it. Something's wrong, it's still too fast. Well, maybe we got fast electricity. No matter what I said it at, 33, 45, 78, it still plays too fast. I think you got a lemon here. Oh, Mom, what a shame. 
You got stuck. No, 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 I didn't. This came with a complete guarantee. All I have to do is take it back to the store. Yeah, wrap it up again, Craig. Are you sure they'll exchange it? Positive. I never get anything unless I can exchange it if I'm dissatisfied. Hey, Mom. How come you didn't exchange me 17 years ago? <laughs> she tried. She tried. <laughs> <laughs> Scene 2, Interior Department Store. This is a store like Akron, Corvettes, or Whitefront. The store is a very busy type. It's well stocked with a section with many electrical appliances such as toasters, radios, TV sets, hi-fi sets, refrigerators, etc. There are a couple of salesmen waiting on customers. There's a counter marked complaint department. Lucy enters dragging a heavy package. Yes, miss. May I help you? <laughs> oh, I hope so. I have a complaint. Well, that's what I'm here for. To handle all the nasty little complaints. <laughs> we want to be looked upon as one big happy family. Remember our slogan? A satisfied customer is the best advertisement. <laughs> Good. Yesterday, I... Remember, nothing makes the world so bright as when the customer is always right. <laughs> Yesterday, I... Every department is willing to try for you. Our hairstylists are willing to die for you. <laughs> now, what seems to be the trouble? Yesterday, I bought this hi-fi set, and it doesn't work properly. Oh, what a shame. What's wrong with it? When it plays, it goes... <laughs> it goes... <laughs> That's right. And no matter what speed it's on, it goes... <laughs> but there's something definitely wrong with it. No, definitely. I'm so glad you understand. Mr. Uh, Mr. Clunk. Clunk? <laughs> now, if there's something wrong with the merchandise, it should be returned. Yes, indeedy. That's what I'm here for. Oh, you don't return it to us. Uh, you return it to the manufacturer. The manufacturer? In Chicago. Chicago? <laughs> Man, please don't get so emotional. We don't lose our voices here. But I bought this set here, not Chicago. I'm sorry. You'll have to return it to the manufacturer, the premier Otronics company. Now, just wait a little old second. I bought this here yesterday, and I, I paid cash. Here's the sales slip. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has a guarantee right here. It says, uh, we agree to promptly repair or replace without charge, any part which is found to be defective. Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. So, read it yourself. Oh, I, I know what it says there. I also know what it says at the bottom. At the bottom? The man now takes out the largest magnifying glass in the world and holds it up to Lucy's guarantee and reads, squinting. The value of the article is delivered to our bank, and the transportation costs are borne by the purchaser. You mean I have to take this back to Chicago? Oh, heavens to Mrs. O'Leary's cow, no! You can mail it. Mail it? Well, that can cost five or ten dollars with postage. More if you insure it. Oh! <laughs> I'm not going to go through all that bother. I'll just take my money back. <laughs> oh, you're putting me on. Uh, no, I'm not. What about that sign? Right, right here. If not satisfied, money cheerfully refunded. Oh, oh that. Oh. <laughs> yes, that. What of it? 
Read the teensy weensy print. <laughs> provided the article is returned within 24 hours of purchase. Well, that's fine. I just bought this yesterday. It's, it's way under 24 hours. Uh, yeah, you gotta refund my money. Uh, now read the teensy weensy itsy bitsy print. <laughs> Writing the article purchased has not been unwrapped or used. Or used? Well, if you don't use it, how are you gonna know it doesn't work? Oh, that is a problem. I think you're being terribly unfair. Don't blame me. I'm just a cog in the big wheel of industry. Okay. All right. Well, I'd like to speak to your boss. Impossible, madam. He left for Detroit this morning. Ah, just my luck. When I need him, he's out gallivanting around. Oh, madam, he didn't go on a pleasure trip. He's uh, trying to get a new car under his guarantee. One of his wheels fell off. Well, I wish him luck. When will he be back? Who knows? You can't make good time driving 1,500 miles on three wheels. Well, I don't know about him, but I'll be back soon. Good luck, madam. And remember, as sure as my name is Elroy P. Clunk, I admire a customer with lots of spunk. <laughs> Scene three, interior, unique employment agency, office. Lucy is standing near her desk. Lucy is leaning over her desk as another girl signs a piece of paper. Thanks, Mimi. You're the 24th secretary in this building to sign the petition. I'm happy to sign it. It's about time we customers started getting an even break. What I'm asking for is an even break. How about giving the bosses an even break and getting back to work? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Carter. See you later, Lucy. Oh, Harry, won't you reconsider signing this petition? Lucille, the only petition I'll sign is the one to have you committed. <laughs> Wasting just working hours with this nonsense. It's not nonsense. They gave me a guarantee on the hi-fi set. What I should have gotten was a guarantee on the guarantee. <laughs> It's probably your own fault. Chances are you didn't hook up the hi-fi set right in the first place. Now let's get to work. But it was done right. And I didn't do it. Craig did. Well, and besides... Fine, fine. Let's get to work. All right. The Rylander contracts have to be typed up by this evening. Type. But... Type! <laughs> Why aren't you typing? Because the typewriter isn't working. What a coincidence. You two make a lovely couple. <laughs> it's not my fault. I've had trouble with this thing ever since you got it. Oh, fine. I've had trouble with this electric typewriter since you got it, and my hi-fi set won't work. Lucille, the trouble with you and all women is that they don't understand electricity and electrical appliances. Harry, don't blame me. Look, the carriage, it won't even move. Up, 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 I understand these things. Oh. I'll have this fixed in a jiffy. You see, you see, the keys are stuck, carriage won't work, and not only that, there's a- Lucille. Please calm down. Anger will get you nowhere. Harry calmly taps the keys. No luck. He tries to move the carriage. Nothing happens. He slaps the typewriter hard a couple of times on the sides. Still nothing happens. Then he finally smashes his clenched right hand on top of the typewriter. At this, we have one of those short circuit electrical flashes with a puff of smoke and the carriage flies off the typewriter. Never mind, I'll have it repaired. After all, we've only had the typewriter a couple of weeks. The guarantee must still be in force. At least you got the carriage to move. <laughs> Hello, this is Harrison Carter of Carter's Unique Employment Agency. That's right. I purchased a typewriter a few weeks ago from you and we're having a slight problem with it. 
Oh, it's guaranteed for a year? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, you see the carriage and the keys of the typewriter won't move and I... What? Send it back to the manufacturer? Why can't I just bring it into you and... But... Oh, I have to send it. Very well. What's the manufacturer's address? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Tokyo! <laughs> Where's that petition? You mean it? You're gonna sign it? Oh. <laughs> I certainly am. Lucille, I never thought I'd be on your side in anything, but oh, right now, I'm on your team. Now, what we've got to do is call an indignation meeting of as many people as we can find who have been taken the same way we were. Then we'll... How do you do, sir? I represent the Jiffy Jotting Adding Machine. It's the least expensive, compact, and easily operated machine on the market. <laughs> does it have a guarantee? <laughs> it certainly does. Out, out, out! Scene four, interior, Lucy's living room. The living room is set up as though it was a meeting. There are numerous chairs, perhaps rows. Those chairs are occupied by numerous men and women. Lucy is presiding over the meeting like a chair lady. She stands behind a bridge table with a gavel in her hand. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's, uh, let's see. Let's hear the next complaint. Do you have one? Cast it, and it's Mrs. Mrs. Sheila Caston. Well, what is your complaint, Mrs. Caston? It's this toaster. It hasn't worked properly from the day I bought it. Well, well, what's wrong with it? Well, it's easier to demonstrate it than to explain it. May, may I plug it in? Sir, yes, of course, certainly. Right, right, right there. Or does it burn the toast? Mm, not exactly. What happens? You'll see in just a moment. The toaster spits out toast and it flies through the air. This gag is easily rigged on a toaster. If it's not feasible for Mrs. Caston to be carrying the toaster, it can already be on the table plugged in. Oh, well, yeah, uh, that is certainly unusual. It certainly is. I have the only ceiling with wall-to-wall -to -wall toast. <laughs> now, who's the next one? Will you stand up and tell us your name, please? My name is Portnoy, Clara Portnoy. And what is your complaint, Mrs. Portnoy? Two weeks ago, I had an electric eye installed to open my garage door. And this electric eye didn't work? It works too well. Every time I take a shower, it opens the bathroom window. <laughs> oh, they'll honor it all right, provided I mail the whole garage back! <laughs> and, uh, is this the same manufacturer who manufactured my hi-fi set? Yes, the Premier Ultronics Company. And my toaster was made by Premier Ultronics, too. See, it has their trademark right on it. P.U. <laughs> Are there any more? Sorry to be late, Lucille, but it was an emergency. And I have another complaint for you. I just had a new television set installed, and it's gone berserk. Channel 2's picture keeps getting mixed up with Channel 7. Oh. <laughs> yes. I just watched the flying nun self-destruct in five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, I actually saw James Arness shoot a woman on gun smoke. Well, maybe she deserved the shooting. Maybe she was a wicked woman. Doris Day? <laughs> and your name is? Uh, Martin Phillips. Uh, uh, my complaint is rather uh, embarrassing. See, I bought this doll for my daughter, and it's supposed to walk and talk and, uh, well, uh, wet. <laughs> 
and what's wrong with it? Well, it walks all right, and, uh, and it talks all right. But it doesn't wet. Oh, it wets all right, but look how. Oh. I never saw anything like that before. And go explain that to a three-year-old baby. That is a problem. All right, are there any more? Mom, excuse us for interrupting. <sighs> but we got a dandy for you. You know, we were supposed to rehearse with our group at Steve's house. And Steve just bought a brand new electric guitar, and the first time he plugged it in to play it... Ow! It short-circuited and his hair caught on fire. And Steve has so much hair, it took three fire companies to put it out. <laughs> oh, poor Steve. Now he looks like Yul Brenner with sideburns. <laughs> etc. etc. And the guitar was made by the premier Ultronics company. Yeah, and they won't exchange it. He's got to send it back to Chicago. What? Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have more than enough evidence. We are going to present our complaint to the president of the company in person. <laughs> Tomorrow we'll go and we'll show those manufacturers they can't get away with giving meaningless guarantees and defective merchandise. All right, Mom. This meeting is now adjourned. This is my favorite note in the script. Note, if the toast didn't come down in the earlier bit, now at this point the toast can fall down. And please, don't ask me why or for any explanations. If we do this bit here, Lucy and the group can react. <laughs> Scene five, or the last act. Interior, stockholders meeting room. This is a large room with rows of seats and benches to accommodate the stockholders. The room is furnished with very businesslike uh, furniture. Upstage, there's a raised platform. On this platform is a very dignified man. He is Mr. Gary president of the premier ultrasonic company. Excuse me, miss. Are you people in the right place? I think so. This is a special meeting of the premier ultrasonic company. It's for stockholders only. Oh, well, that's us. Craig, uh, let's see. You and Kim, why don't you sit there? Oh. And uh, Mrs. Portnoy, Mr. Phillips, you sit. Uh, Mrs. Caston, you, you, you sit. Madam, you're holding up important business. We are about to vote on a $50 million bond issue. Well, this is important. Together. Madam, this is a stockholders meeting, not a bingo game. <laughs> We're stockholders. Oh, uh, may I ask how many shares of stock you own? One shares. We all own only one share. Good heavens, there must be at least 20 of you. 22. Yeah, we each chipped in a dollar 28. And if it'll give us more power in this meeting, we will, we may even buy more shares. No oh, goody. They'll be dancing on Wall Street tonight. Please, be seated. The chair recognizes Mr. Huntington. Oh, I want to make a motion. Um, you can't make a motion. The chair doesn't recognize you. Well, of course you don't, silly. We've never met before. I'm Mrs. Lucille Carter, and what's your name? <laughs> uh, my name is... Madam, the chair doesn't recognize you. It recognizes Mr. Huntington. Oh. There are rules. I'm a strict parliamentarian. Well, let's not drag religion into this. <laughs> but you don't. I mean, I don't. Uh, madam, how would you like to sell your stock for three times what you paid for it? 
No, we came here for a reason, and I demand to be heard. Mr. Chairman, I relinquish the floor to this lady. I make a motion that this company honor its guarantees. Madam, we are discussing a $50 million bond issue, and... First things first, I made a motion. <sighs> Very well. We'll vote on it if someone seconds your motion. Do I hear a second on Mrs. Carter's motion? I'll second the motion. Madam, you cannot second your own motion. Why not? I'm for it. <laughs> but you cannot second your own motion. I second it. I third it. You can't second it. You own the same share of stock that she does. All of us here bought merchandise manufactured by your company, and because we have to send it back to Chicago, Mrs. Kasdan's kitchen ceiling is covered with toast, and Mrs. Portnoy's electric eye is a peeping Tom. Bill uh, Brenner. And Stevie, who used to have hair like Tiny Tim, now looks like Yule Brenner. <laughs> And Jim Arnett shot Doris Day's doll because it wouldn't wet right. I believe I may be of some help. What's your name? Harrison Otis Carter. Oh, you're her husband. Bite your tongue. I sympathize with these people. Well, just last week, I purchased one of our hi-fi sets, and it didn't work properly. Oh, I'm sorry. What was wrong with it? Well, when I turned it on, it went, hang, 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 hang. You see? You see? I make a motion that our company stand by our guarantees. From now on, we either replace it where it was bought or return the customer's money. I second the motion. Well, this is unusual, but we'll take a voice vote on this motion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Lucille, congratulations. Everyone here owes you a vote of thanks. Everything will be fixed. Oh. Except I'm stuck with that typewriter. <laughs> oh, no, Harry. Oh, no. No, you're not. Come on, gang. On to Tokyo! <laughs> <laughs> So, we hope you enjoyed our little sit-home production of Here's Lucy the Crusader. If you did, and um, you feel like making a donation, it's always great, to broadwaycares.org or covenanthouse.org. If you want to send them a couple of dollars, it's a tough time for everybody. I'm sure it's a tough time for even people watching this. So, um, everybody stay safe, and uh, maybe we can find another fun script to do. Thanks for watching.